Hi, everyone, and welcome uh, yet again to another APA virtual conference interview. I'm uh, Kevin Kunzman, Managing Editor of ACP Live, and uh, we're continuing our discussion today on SEP 363856 and the newest New England Journal of Medicine findings uh, showing that the non-D2 receptor binding antipsychotic drug uh, from Synovian uh, reported a greater reduction from positive and negative symptom scale total score versus placebo in patients with schizophrenia. Obviously, this drug candidate has a lot of uh, promising details to it and uh, potential for further clinical assessment is going to answer a lot more questions with it. But just to discuss this newest uh, NEJM study, uh, joining us today is Dr. Kenneth Koblen. Dr. Koblen is the Chief Scientific Officer of Synovian and the lead author of the uh, recently published article. So Dr. Koblen, before we start, you want to just say hi to everyone? Hello and, and, and welcome to the interview and, and thanks for your interest in Synovian and SEP363856 program. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. So it's such odd circumstances talking in this way. Imaginably, we'd have been doing this in Philadelphia this weekend, but uh, so it goes. And, you know, obviously still just the same amount of questions and information we want to learn about this, this drug. And maybe starting off, could you tell us a little bit more, Dr. Colvin, about what led to the consideration of deviating from the dopamine receptor agonists uh, in treating schizophrenia? Why, why this drug candidate? So the, so the current class of antipsychotics are actually dopamine uh, receptor antagonists. They actually block binding of, of, at D2 receptors. And uh, Synovian is really focused on uh, developing innovative medicines and really focused on uh, patients uh, and the unmet medical needs with respect to patients. And so for the past roughly 60 years, since the first discovery of chlorpromazine, um, there's really been a dominant class of antipsychotic agents that work through antagonizing the D2 receptor. Um, our goal was to actually go and deliver a completely novel uh, medication. And others in the field have been working on trying to look at other alternative mechanisms as well. And so uh, it, it's really around uh, trying to go and come up with a new way to actually go and help our patients uh, that are suffering from schizophrenia uh, and yet not actually um, have the adverse event profile of the current eight antipsychotic class, which include issues with respect to cardiometabolic profile, uh, as well as to with respect to extrapyramidal side effects. Excellent. And that sort of feeds into my next question, uh, being the patient population. What exactly was it made up for for this trial? So the, the patient population studied in the uh, New England Journal of Medicine article that's been published uh, was a group of patients aged 18 to 40 years of age. Um, and they had actually experienced hospitalizations due to an acute psychotic episode uh, no more than two prior times. So there are subjects, uh, and it was a global study, uh, United States uh, and pre predominantly Eastern Europe. Uh, the outcome, uh, the primary outcome being positive and negative symptom scale total score. Can you, can you explain a little bit about, um, I guess, the, can you contextualize for us, uh, you know, it's showing significant benefit for this. What, what is this indicating in, in treated patients? Yeah, so, so the positive and negative symptom syndrome scale, the PAN scale, as it's called, is the primary registration endpoint that's utilized by regulatory authorities. Since its development, um, it, the, the, the title actually tells you what it measures. It measures both the positive symptoms, the hallucinations, the auditory voices that patients feel uh, and hear and report, as well as the negative symptoms, the anhedonia, the social withdrawal. Uh, symptoms. And so uh, on each of the individual subscales, as well as the PANS total score, um, there was a really robust effect of CEP856 relative to placebo. Uh, um, from baseline, it was about a seven and a half point difference between those two groups, which was highly statistically significant with a p-value less than 0 0.001 uh, and an effect size on the order of 0.45. So um, really robust effect uh, that actually continued not just in the acute phase, which is reported in the New England Journal of Medicine article, but in the supplementary material, you'll actually see um, data for the drug's effectiveness on the PAN scale in a monotherapy setting, so all patients were rolled over to only CEP363856 over the next six months. 
and what's reported in the supplementary material is continued improvement on that positive and negative symptom uh, scale uh, over the next six months. That's a good point too, to the fact that um, you know safety outcomes are you know highly emphasized often when we're looking at new candidates for mental illnesses, and uh, especially when we see patients getting follow up. That sort of becomes a moment when we emphasize uh, what are the safety outcomes, what are the adverse outcomes that we are seeing. Can you kind of characterize that for us? What were some of the most common common adverse event outcomes, if any, and was it consistent with previous findings? So thank you for the question. The safety of the drug was, was really um, the, the most important, one of the most important findings uh, in, in this new study. Uh, CEP363856 is, is, a, is a novel compound. It actually works through a novel mechanism. It is a, a TAR1, 5-HT1A compound, uh, agonist. And as we let in the conversation, the current class of antipsychotics are antagonists. They block D2 receptor. We actually work by agonizing the G protein couple receptors. So it's a completely different mechanism. The safety is differentiated as well. So uh, in the 28 day study, uh, the, the most uh, serious and most common adverse events were with respect to nausea, some GI effects, uh, and somnolence was actually the highest percentage, uh, single digit percentage uh, compared to placebo. But in general, the overall safety profile in comparison to placebo was comparable uh, in the 28 days of the study. There were also uh, minimal effects on weight uh, and cardiometabolic parameters such as lipids. Uh, and then in that six month long-term safety study that we rolled all the subjects into, once again, the overall safety profile was indistinguishable from what would be included with respect to a placebo arm. So no change in prolactin, uh, no change in uh, weight, no change in cardiometabolic parameters. I think the most important finding for me, and I think in the study, is the fact that there don't appear to be any effects on extrapyramidal symptoms. So one of the, one of the real adverse events for the antipsychotic class is with respect to extrapyramidal symptoms, movement-related uh, symptoms. Uh, and we don't see that with the CEP363856 short-term acute study uh, or in the um, six-month open-label safety study as well. Excellent. Great. And um, it sort of, again, feeds into the last question I have for you regarding the next steps for clinical research. How long are we hoping to assess the drug in eligible patients? And um, what else are we going to be seeking in terms of parameters as we uh, get closer to eventual pipeline development? So uh, Synovian has actually initiated uh, large phase three studies uh, on CEP363856. This is a so-called DIAMOND program developing it stands for developing innovative medicines in, in mental health disorders. And the acute studies are uh, six weeks in duration. Um, the long-term studies are one year in duration. Uh, and so we have already received uh, in consultation with the Food and Drug Administration, we've completed our end of phase two meeting. Uh, back in May of 2019, Synovian uh, received breakthrough therapy designation on CEP363856, which allows us to have more um, regular interactions with the FDA and, and, and they partner with us in the further development of the molecule. And so we'll be working to accumulate our ICH minimum exposures uh, out through one year. Uh, and, and, as, and we hope to replicate the results from the 201 study uh, and demonstrate both the effectiveness as well as the overall safety profile uh, over one year. Thank you so much, Doc. And that's all I really had. Is, is there anything else you want to add in, in terms of uh, the therapy's clinical impact, its potential for this patient population? I guess the final thing I'm just going to say is that Synovian is committed to uh, bring forward this breakthrough medication for the roughly 2.5 million Americans and over 23 million uh, schizophrenic patients worldwide. Um, we believe that we have uh, the first in a class of new novel agents, uh, these agonists, TAR1, 5-HT1A agonists, uh, to work in schizophrenia. Um, and so it's the first of, of a pipeline of molecules and medicines that uh, Synovian is developing uh, in order to treat major unmet medical needs moving forward. 